I'm François Ravenel, I'm President and CEO of Inversago Pharma. Inversago was founded in 2015 based on the technology of uh, George Kunos, or developed by George Kunos at the NIH. It was founded by Maxime Ranger, a good friend of mine and serial entrepreneur, and I joined in uh, to found uh, the company based on this technology. And so we got really, really excited by the biology, and that was what kind of drove our interest originally. He was a little bit of a wild card, to be honest, at the beginning, um, but I think it speaks to you know, taking a, an early stage bet on a first time CEO. The CB1 biology had been clinically proven in the early 2000s. It was clear that they were bringing great benefits above and beyond simple appetite suppression and weight loss. And that's what really attracted me. The problem was the hypothesis at the start was that you need to go to the brain Inversago was based on trying to develop safer versions of CB1 blockers. When you block the CB1 receptor in the brain, you're also blocking some of the pleasure centers in the brain. And so people aren't feeling the same pleasure when they're going out for a run or eating a nice meal. And one of the side effects of that is that people became anxious, irritable, depressed, and in a few very rare cases, I even had increased suicidal ideation. INV202 was bringing several new features to the biology. Your brain is surrounded by this great wall that is the blood-brain barrier, and INV202 is built not to cross that blood-brain barrier, therefore limiting the access of the drug to the brain, which was one of the problems of the first generation of CB1 blockers. And that's why INV202 had the profile for the development of a great new generation of CB1 blockers. INV202 has a lot of potential therapeutic value, not just in obesity, but also in chronic kidney disease, in fibrotic disorders as well. I think for the patients, um, our data have demonstrated great success and the potential for this to become a unique anti-obesity drug in the market. The past failures in obesity by Big Pharma create a, a, a challenge that was way above my expectations. It might have been a naive conception, but I was developing a drug with a concept that made sense, and I thought people would buy in. But you realize that the pharma industry is extremely conservative, and I had to convince them over and over again that this made sense, albeit the absence of a market in 2015, 16, and 2017. There weren't any markets in obesity. In 2022, my biggest concern was our ability to finance the company because we had built great momentum. We had great data coming out at the end of that year, but we needed the financial support to run two phase two studies. Zempic as being, you know, a first-in-class uh, compound really set the stage for demonstrating that obesity is actually a multifactorial disease with many com comorbidities that can benefit from a treatment such as Zempic. And through that, then it generated immense interest in order to develop other orthogonal approaches in order to treat patients that have obesity, including INV202 and CB1 inverse agonists. All of these compounds are addressing the same biology and are all injectable drugs. Here you'll have another option. The idea that we were bringing back a brand new class of molecules that everybody had turned their back on 20 years earlier really started to gain some momentum. The 2022 Series C financing was an important step in making the company a credible and advanced clinical company. It gave us the view from pharma companies that we were on our way to take this all the way. Because the efficacy from that 28-day study was so surprisingly good, all of a sudden, like in a very short period of time, things changed rather quickly and we went from this company that you know had a five-year plan to uh, we might not be around in six months. There were discussions, proposals, but in the end, Novo Nordisk was the right partner 
they have the infrastructure and the, the firepower to run those clinical trials that need to be run in obesity and other metabolic disorders, and they were the right choice. The $1.1 billion acquisition of Inverse Sago has important strategic and financial implications for the Canadian biotechnology ecosystem. It proves that we have the know-how, we have the people, and the understanding of drug development to make good drugs. A return like Inversigo puts a lot of wind in your sails. It just really validated our hypotheses and validated all the hard work that we had done. If I had to describe Francois and his capabilities in one word, it would be magnetic. Scientifically, he's unique, smart, and business-wise, he has a great vision. He can see things not everyone can see. With Francois, it's always collaborative. There's never an area where you can't go with a conversation, no matter how difficult it may seem. While Francois is an incredibly intelligent person, you never feel like he thinks he's better than anyone else. He's always looking for that better answer from the people around him. He is extremely smart, extremely focused, and adds a lot of fun into the mix while you're working hard. My hopes and aspiration for patients is that this drug makes it to market, helps them deal with weight loss, glycemic control, and lipids, and I hope that we can pick this up and push our biology even further.